On the show today, we will spotlight Tim McCready's insane consistency lately. We'll touch on your Brent Marks hot take reactions and double back to the wild IRA weekend. Let's go. It's Tuesday, July 19th. I'm Justin Fiedler. This is Dirt Tracker Daily. Interesting mix of comments and reactions to my Brent Marks hot take yesterday. Some agreed, some did not. I fully expected that. I love those of you that think I'm a World of Outlaws homer. And yes, I did work for World Racing Group and the World of Outlaws, but I don't care either way. Uh, the hate, though, just it completely made my day. I've actually been a Brent Marks fan for a real long time. He was one of our very early interviews on Open Red way back in 2016, even long before he was a full-timer with the series. I think it was episode 18 if you want to go back and listen to that one from a long time ago Blake Anderson with the assist on that one as well and Brent's crew chief is Heath Moyle who was a past guest on both my conversation show and he was on the original crew guys episode of open red uh, so I've known Heath a long time as well and I did get a text from Heath yesterday about my show which I thought was great he did point out that they backed up in the heat race earlier in the week because they had an engine go sour so that's good information there about the kind of circumstances about them going from I believe first to third in that heat race at the end of the day though I wasn't hating on Brent or their performance they were fast when it mattered and you can only play the hand you're dealt and in the case of the Kings Royal that means heat race and versions in one qualifying session. I'm not taking anything away from what they accomplished. And just for some uh, a few numbers, because a few of you brought this up, since the 2017 season, only Donnie Schatz and Logan Schuhart have, get, have gained more positions come feature time than Brent Marks has. Schatz is plus 966, Schuhart is plus 776, and Marks is plus 760. In 304 outlaw appearances, he finished better than he started in 183 of them. That's right at 60%. Qualifying, though, continues to be a tough thing for the Myerstown Missile. For comparison, since 2017, David Gravel is the best full-timer in average qualifying position at 6.74. Uh, that includes 71 quick times for David Gravel. Over that same span, Mark's average time trial position is 14.57 with just two quick times. He's been better this season and was better in 2021. He's moved into the 12s, uh, kind of in that average area, but there's still a ton of room for improvement there for Marks in qualifying. On an inversion night, though, like the Royal and like the Knoxville Nationals will be coming up, it's not necessarily a bad thing to be down the order in qualifying. Drivers will tell you they don't sandbag on those uh, nights, but it's not an opinion that being towards the top is not helpful. That's just a fact. Either way, though, it was an interesting thought experiment, and thanks for the feedback, even if you disagreed with me. I do want to call you guys out, though, because yesterday I said it was Monday, July 16th, and I didn't have a single comment or message about how I had the wrong date, so you guys were asleep at the wheel on that one. Anyway, moving on. Uh, it's going to be a busy week across the country on dirt tracks, and there's plenty to get into tonight, especially if you're a late model fan. Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series is headed to Houston Speedway tonight for the first time ever, and late models on bull rings, never a bad thing. Tonight's show is $10,000 to win, and then the series will have Wednesday off before they come back Thursday uh, at I-80 Speedway. That is night one of the weekend uh, there at I-80, and the Silver Dollar Nationals on tap for this weekend. Since this is the series debut at Husets, I have no Lucas races in the DirtTracker.com analytics database for this event, and it appears as though the Ward of Outlaws late models have never raced there either, so no data to go off for, for tonight. And to go even further, according to Dirt on Dirt, this is just the 11th late model race at the track since 1980. That's a pretty wild stat. The DirtTracker.com analytics prediction formula is going with points leader Tim McCready tonight, and I'll roll with that as well. If you want to know how TMAC has gotten to the points lead in the last few weeks, look no further than their just absolutely insane consistency. They won at 34 Raceway on May 22nd. They followed that up with a 17th at Wheatland on May 27th. Not great. But since then, they have ripped off 19 straight top 10 finishes, with 11 of those being top 5 runs as well. That also includes that big $50,000 win at the Firecracker 100 at Lernerville. It's the current longest active top 10 streak in the country for any of the major dirt racing series. David Gravel's actually the next closest with the World of Allies. He's got 11 straight top 10s. McCready is actually just a tick off pace from last year in terms of win percentage and top five percentage, but he's actually finishing in the top 10 more often this season than he did last. Uh, and his average finish is just a tiny little tiny tick better this year than it was last year. This year it's 6.108 versus 6.111 from 2021. So just a very small difference there. But that's the type of consistency that won McCready the title last year and the type of consistency we have normally come to expect from his rival at, at this moment in Brandon Shepard. 
Interestingly, McCready's feature start is a full position worse from a year ago, but then he's passing more cars come feature time. As for Bishop, the Rocket team had issues at Deer Creek with that crash, and they had an engine go south at I-70 while leading late, but they did bounce back over the weekend at Tri-City and Lucas Oil with finishes of 5th and 3rd. They will have to keep that up just to stay in the fight with the 39 going forward. I think he and Ricky Thornton Jr. here would probably need to rip off some wins to close this thing back up, though, with 100 between Shepard and RTJ, well over 200 back. Besides uh, the Lucas regulars, it sounds like we'll get a lot of the MLR, uh, MLRA guys. I always struggle with that one, uh, also in attendance tonight. Uh, you're going to see names like Johnny Scott, Mason Oberkramer, and others uh, tonight. This one will be live on flow. The weather looks good. It's going to be warm, but it looks good there for Brandon, South Dakota. Also on flow tonight, you can check out round number four of the Southern Nationals late model series. Corey Hedgecock and Dale McDowell have won the first three races between them, with McDowell leading the points coming into tonight. Uh, they are racing at I-75 Raceway. Other names we should see include Ashton Winger. Uh, they're obviously on that new pick-and-choose schedule. Ross Bales, Cody Overton, and Jensen Ford. Following tonight, the 12-race series heads to Sonoya on Thursday. And I had a few of you bring up the IRA racing from the weekend, so I wanted to double back and talk about the racing at River Cities. Uh, I hadn't watched these two shows, but there was some really great action there over the two nights. River Cities is one of those racetracks that rarely disappoints, though. Friday went to Austin Pierce, and Saturday was an absolute barn burner with Jake Blackhurst eventually coming out on top. Jade Hastings led uh, both races late in the going, uh, but ended up second on Friday and third on Saturday. Led a ton of laps, no wins to show for her. That sucks for Jade. The finale on Saturday turned into a battle between Hastings and Thomas Kennedy, but on the final lap, Blackhurst absolutely ripped the top in three and four and beat both guys back to the line. To the point that the announcer thought Kennedy actually won the race. If you look up on the screen, if you're watching this on YouTube, that little white flash you see right at the flag stand is Blackhurst. Uh, his run took him from third to the lead right at the line. If you haven't watched it, the replays are available over on Flow. Really good racing there. The IRA points battle remains tight right now with Blackhurst leading Jake Newman and Jordan Goldsberry. The two chasers are only 23 and 24 points back, respectively. The 410 series is back this weekend with stops at Outagamey and Wilmot. Uh, remember, the IRA races up north uh, if you want to check some of those races out. Uh, there are seven shows on the streaming schedule today. Flow Racing has the Lucas Light Models from Houston, like I just mentioned, the Star Nationals from I-75 and Flow 24-7. XR's Northern Storm continues tonight at Grand Rapids on XR+. Plus. Jimmy Mars was the late model winner uh, last night. The Cushion has Micros uh, from Bridgeport Spirit Speedway and there is racing at Rapid Speedway and Antioch on Speedsport. To see the full daily streaming schedule with links to watch, head over to dirttracker.com slash watch tonight. That's it for the show today. Have a good Tuesday. If you have thoughts about the topics on today's show, please leave them in the comments below or tweet at me. Thanks everybody for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow for more Dirt Tracker Daily.